When it comes to space anomalies, I feel like we could be talking about them forever and not even scratch the surface of the mysteries that exist out in the ether. Seeing as the powers that be have been on a bit of a space and underwater kick lately, and I now know about the theory that octopuses are possibly aliens or descended from aliens, starting off today with a celestial jellyfish felt like a good place to begin. In the cosmic tapestry of anomalies, a celestial jellyfish emerges, its ethereal tendrils reaching across the vast expanse of a distant galaxy cluster, 340 million light years away from the gaze of our pale blue dot. Scientists, armed with instruments that dissect the cosmic symphony, stumbled upon this mysterious structure and couldn't figure it out. This jellyfish-shaped apparition, aptly christened the USS Jellyfish, unfurls its tentacles through the cold void of space, emitting an ultra-low radio frequency, a cosmic whisper that echoes across the cosmic oceans. Its existence, a puzzle woven into the fabric of the cosmos, beckons scientists to decipher its origin and purpose. The celestial sea creature, as the astronomers playfully term it, is not an ethereal being, but a manifestation of the cosmic dance between sizzling hot gas and electrons, choreographed by the hand of black hole theatric. So, Picture this. Material expelled from a voracious black hole, a cosmic burp of sorts, entwines itself with magnetic fields, birthing the spectral dance of the USS Jellyfish. As a celestial being navigates the cosmic currents, its tentacles emit radio waves, a symphony that resonates across the vastness of the galaxy cluster. Here, in the realm of galactic congregations, the dance of particles and the hum of magnetic fields converge, giving birth to a cosmic ballet that transcends the boundaries of our comprehension. So what fuels the celestial dance? The expelled material ejected from the gravitational clutches of a black hole, swirls like cosmic beings, encircling magnetic fields in a gravitational waltz. So in this intricate choreography, radio waves emanate from the celestial jellyfish, a celestial orchestra, I know, I just really like that word, playing a tune that reaches us across unfathomable distances. As the gas and electrons engage in this pas de deux, they create a celestial ballet that transcends the boundaries of our understanding. So the reacceleration of radio wave, an encore in the cosmic symphony, occurs as the jellyfish traverses the galaxy cluster, leaving astronomers in awe of the intricate interplay between matter, magnetism, and the cosmic stage, upon which this celestial dance unfolds. Next up, we have a word that's about to be fun for me to say over and over and over again, and umuamua. I swear I tried to look up how to pronounce things for today, folks. I'm not perfect. So when it comes to the vast cosmic expanse that I love to talk about, this cosmic visitor decided to grace our solar neighborhood, making a spectacular entrance back in 2017. I was like, hey guys, how's it going? This massive elongated object resembling a cigar hurtled past Earth at an extraordinary speed, a breakneck pace of 196,000 miles per hour, leaving astronomers and enthusiasts alike in awe. NASA, ever the cosmic sentinel, proclaimed Oumuamua as a celestial emissary, a cosmic envoy from beyond our solar borders. Its trajectory, its otherworldly speed, set it apart as the first known interstellar object to venture into, well, our cosmic neighborhood. However, the origins of this cigar-shaped wanderer remain shrouded in mystery, a puzzle that intrigued and perplexed the cosmic detectives over at NASA. Harvard professor Avi Loeb, with the audacity to entertain the extraterrestrial, postulated that, well, this thing might not be a mere cosmic wanderer, but a relic of advanced alien technology, a cosmic artifact cast adrift from a civilization beyond our horizon. His hypothesis injected a dose of extraterrestrial intrigue into the scientific discourse, igniting the cosmic imaginations of those who dared to ponder the possibility of cosmic neighbors. But the cosmic jury remained divided, because that's what happens when you talk about aliens, and other scientists, tethered to the gravitational forces of skepticism, proposed alternative cosmic narratives. Some suggested that it might be a cosmic refugee, a Pluto-like celestial wanderer dislodged from its planetary abode eons ago, embarking on a cosmic odyssey that eventually led it into the gravitational embrace of our sun. So as this whodunit continued its journey through the cosmic seas, its unknown nature lingered in the cosmic consciousness. This cosmic cigar, once an unknown emissary from the cosmic expanse, transcended the realm of scientific inquiry, becoming a symbol of the mysteries that lie beyond our celestial shores. So, in this tapestry that I love so much, where galaxies swirl like Van Gogh's starry night, a peculiar celestial phenomenon caught everybody's attention back in 2019. A hazy circular object materialized in the cosmic tableau, defying easy categorization, and leaving scientists uttering a cosmic WTF in the face of this apparition. Dubbed WTF, kind of fitting, for its mysterious nature, this circular cosmic enigma sparked intrigue and bewilderment amongst astronomers. A cosmic interloper, a smoky sphere hanging in the celestial expanse, prompted cosmic detectives to 
unfold the cosmic mysteries surrounding its existence. But this was not a lone wanderer. It was merely the herald of a cosmic revelation. So within just days, a celestial deja vu unfolded as a second smoky orb graced the cosmic stage. The bewilderment obviously deepened, and astronomers found themselves confronted not only with an isolated anomaly, but with a cosmic chorus of mysterious spheres. The cosmos, it seemed, was orchestrating a cosmic riddle, and scientists needed to decipher the celestial clues embedded in these objects. Enter the odd radio circles, ORCs, a name befitting their cosmic ambiguity. These circular enigmas, draped in cosmic haze, defied conventional explanation, earning them the moniker of odd. As scientists delved into the cosmic detective work, the true nature of ORCs remained elusive, a puzzle awaiting cosmic unraveling. The cosmic speculation surrounding ORCs ventured into the realms of theoretical physics and cosmic cataclysms. Some proposed a connection to wormholes, cosmic tunnels bending the fabric of space and time itself. Others pondered whether the ORCs emerged from the aftermath of distant galactic explosions. Going back to the grand cosmic narrative, where mysteries linger like cosmic echoes, the story of ORCs exemplifies the frontiers of our cosmic understanding. So as scientists gaze into the cosmic unknown, these mysterious circles beckon us to peer beyond the veil of certainty, inviting us to contemplate the vast cosmic possibilities that elude our grasp. The cosmic WTF imprinted on these odd radio circles continues to echo through the cosmic corridors, a reminder that the cosmos is not only grand, but profoundly mysterious. So how about some video game references next? So they say that in space, no one can hear you, waka 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 waka. Tell that to the Pac-Man remnant, the gassy remains of an ancient supernova that have taken on a shape instantly recognizable to fans of the classic video game. Behold the cosmic Pac-Man, a quirky and unexpected player on the cosmic stage, residing in the southern sky. So in the grand tapestry of the universe, where stars explode and galaxies collide, this peculiar anomaly, officially known as N63A, emerges as a cosmic callback to a classic video game. Let's just call it Pac-Man, nestled within the large megalenic cloud galaxy, a mere 163,000 light years from the Milky Way, the gassy remains of an ancient star, collapsed under the weight of its own celestial destiny, now echoes the iconic shape of Pac-Man. The celestial creature, born from the remnants of stellar demise, stands as a testament to the whims of cosmic chance. The dispersal of superheated gas took on this unmistakable shape, a cosmic coincidence that transforms a stellar graveyard into a playful homage to a gaming legend. But the cosmic play doesn't end with Pac-Man's silhouette. Bright power pellets dot the cosmic labyrinth, not by happenstance, but by the meticulous craftsmanship of stellar creation. These celestial morsels are young stars, forged from the very same gas cloud that once cradled Pac-Man's ill-fated stellar ancestor. The cycle of stellar life and death continues, and new luminous players emerge in the aftermath of celestial explosions. In the cosmic irony of it all, it appears that Pac-Man's stellar counterpart, despite its celestial charisma, has run out of extra lives. The stars collapse, a cosmic game over, has left behind a captivating visual legacy. A stellar Pac-Man frozen in the cosmic arcades of space and time. So as we gaze into the southern sky where the Pac-Man remnant resides, we find a whimsical reminder that the universe, in its vast complexity, occasionally indulges in playful cosmic configurations. So in the grand cosmic arcade, where stars are born and games are played on a cosmic scale, this celestial Seal Pac-Man serves as a delightful and unexpected token, awaiting the next cosmic level to unfold. Enter the helix-shaped black hole energy cannon, a cosmic spectacle unveiled in the elliptical galaxy Messier 87, located a staggering 55 million light years from our cosmic abode. So in 2019, humanity marveled at the first ever image of a supermassive black hole, an entity of mind-boggling proportions, looming at the heart of Messier 87. Fast forward to the present, and scientists, armed with the Very Large Array Observatory in New Mexico, turn their gaze to the colossal jet erupting from the black hole center. What unfolds is a cosmic shocker that defies the conventional, as the jet, extending a jaw-dropping 8,000 light years, reveals a mesmerizing corkscrew-like helical structure. This revelation, a celestial double helix, challenges our preconceived notions about the straightforward nature of cosmic jets. So instead of a linear trajectory, the black hole unleashes a contorted spiral dance that stretches into the cosmic abyss. At the heart of this cosmic contortion lies a magnetic field, a celestial maestro conducting the symphony of matter and energy that emanates from the black holes core. The magnetic field, akin to a cosmic corkscrew, weaves its intricate pattern through space, extending its influence for an astonishing 3,300 light years. This marks a cosmic record, the longest magnetic field ever detected in a galactic jet. So as we contemplate this celestial spectacle, we are confronted with the boundless complexity of the universe, where even the most common phenomena unfold in unexpected and astonishing ways. The helix-shaped black hole energy cannon transcends the mundane and propels our understanding of the cosmos into uncharted territories. It's a testament to the cosmic grandeur 
horror that defies easy categorization, inviting us to ponder the mysteries that lurk in the depths of space. So as we peer into Messier 87 and witness the celestial choreography, we are reminded that the cosmos, in its vastness, harbors surprises that challenge our intellect and inspire awe. When it comes to what we know versus what we don't know about space, I feel like what we do know would be the shorter list. We definitely aren't alone in the cosmos, but everything else out there is both so close, but too far away to learn more about the intriguing who's its and what's its. Question for y'all, what do you fear most about the great unknowns of space? Mine make up most of today's list, but let me know yours in the comments and let's get cracking. Not to start off today all Incredible Hulk, but have you ever considered the real life implications of gamma ray bursts? Like they sadly aren't going to give you incredible superpowers, but they could possibly easily spell out the end of your life. No biggie, right? Damn, there goes my dream of being Captain Carter 2.0. What can I say? Women with muscles are extremely attractive to my brain. So technically speaking, astronomers have scanned the skies and found no immediate threat of a star exploding in our cosmic faces. The nearest stars that are likely to pop off, if you will, are simply too far away to be a hazard. So good to know I can look up at the skies at night and not have to worry about one of those pretty lights randomly going kaboom. Can you imagine what that would look like though? I'm picturing a mini fireworks moment, but with something a lot more dangerous falling from the sky. Yeah, no thanks. Sadly, I'm not talking about reasons to feel safe thanks to astronaut discoveries today. That would be far too easy and a shorter list. There's a bug coming and it's a biggie, but <laughs> there are bigger, deadlier cosmic threats that have a much larger range and are much more difficult to detect. These are the gamma ray bursts or GRBs for short. These happen when an exploding star triggers the formation of a black hole in its core. Black holes are not fun folks, not fun at all. The material of the dead stars swirls around the newly formed black hole, compressing and heating up as it does. Complex forces trigger the launching of massive jets of gamma ray radiation, which is the most powerful kind of radiation. Think of it like the deadliest x-ray you can imagine, not fun. GRVs are among the most energetic events to occur in the entire universe and have been implicated in previous extinction episodes here on Earth. When the gamma rays blast over Earth, they strip away our protective ozone layer, exposing the surface to the full onslaught of the sun's ultraviolet radiation. And that ozone layer is already hurting as it is, with irreversible global warming still very much a thing. GRBs can originate from stars much farther away from Earth and still be deadly, meaning that we need to get better at mapping as many stars in the galaxy as we possibly can. Thankfully, the average time between disasters is about 10 million years, so I think we're still safe for now. But I'm not a history expert, so let me know in the comments if you think otherwise. What pops into your mind when I say, mm, picture this, a cosmic catastrophe of mind-bending proportions an astronomical nightmare. Hey, let me know in the comments. I like being dramatic. I'm talking about the unnerving possibility of Earth being swallowed by the sun, a scenario that sends shivers down the spines of astronomers, astrophysicists, and regular human beings alike. Now, before you start packing your interstellar survival kit, let's delve into the cosmic intricacies that make this threat both captivating and, quite frankly, terrifying. So our sun, that familiar celestial furnace that's bathed us in warmth for billions of years, is not as static and predictable as it may seem. In about 5 billion years, it's slated to transform into a red giant, a phase in stellar evolution where it expands to engulf its surroundings. So Earth, nestled comfortably in the habitable zone, might find itself in the crosshairs of the sun's impending expansion. The red giant phase is like the grand finale of a celestial fireworks display, but instead of awe-inspiring bursts of color, it unleashes a slow and inerexable embrace that could spell the end for our home planet. As the sun expands, it will devour Mercury and Venus with an insatiable cosmic appetite. Earth might just squeak by its clutches during the initial expansion phase, but don't breathe that sigh of relief just yet. As the sun's outer layers drift away, a process that resembles the graceful shedding of a star's outer wardrobe, it leaves behind a dense core known as a white dwarf. Now, white dwarfs aren't any cosmic cuddle buddies. Their intense gravitational pull can wreak havoc on any nearby celestial bodies, and Earth might be caught in a gravitational dance of doom, which sounds fun, but it isn't. Yeah, let's not get too lost in the apocalyptic reverie. The distance at which Earth orbits the sun during its red giant phase is a little bit uncertain, adding a cosmic wildcard to the mix. If we're lucky, Earth might end up far enough to dodge the sun's gravitational grip. If not, well, let's just say it's not going to be a picnic in the cosmic park. The intricate ballet of celestial bodies and the cosmic dance of gravitational forces make predicting our fate a challenging endeavor. It's like trying to choreograph a dance with a partner whose every move is unpredictable. And the consequences of a misstep are astronomical, literally. Reminds me of a dance partner I had a few years ago who kept trying to convince me that a slush rumba was a real thing. Spoiler alert, it wasn't, and the guy had two left feet. And we were dancing in actual slush. While the prospect of Earth being swallowed by the sun is a disconcerting one, it's also a stark reminder of the dynamic and ever-changing nature of the cosmos. Our sun, a seemingly eternal beacon of stability, is going to eventually transform into a cosmic behemoth that could alter the destiny of our pale blue dot. That's curtains for us, folks. Not to get all Looney Tunes on you. Might as well state the obvious big concern. 
asteroids. I'll start with the quote unquote little guys and then we'll move on from there. So every few years an asteroid the size of a bus slams into our atmosphere at a speed of about 70,000 miles per hour. When it detonates it releases energy equivalent to a medium scale nuclear explosive. Thankfully most of these interlopers detonate over open ocean and high up in the atmosphere. But eventually our luck's gonna run out. And a metal rich asteroid capable of surviving its screaming descent through our atmosphere will aim itself squarely at a densely populated portion of the globe. Our only hope will be to develop an early warning and deflection system so we can launch a spacecraft at the incoming asteroid in hopes of changing its course. But if not, that's curtains for whatever poor people get in the way. Is that scary enough for you? If not, just ask the dinosaurs how fun it is to be hit by an asteroid a few miles across. I have personally visited Jurassic World, and trust me, the dinos there are still feeling the generational impact from the original devastating disaster. Yes, while dinosaurs are still technically around, they're now called birds. Not Tyrannodons, a major impact 65 million years ago destroyed roughly every single land species larger than roughly 100 kilograms, including all but a few lineages of the dinosaurs. The impact was so powerful that it shook Earth like a bell, triggering volcanic eruptions around the globe. It kicked up a giant plume of dust that enveloped Earth in a millennia long fallout winter. So if you're currently complaining about mild winter weather being cold, just imagine a deep freeze where you're forced to isolate long term. Again, I don't know about you, but my mental health can't take another long term isolation stint. Thankfully, these planet scale disasters are much rarer than the smaller asteroid impacts that only cause local devastation. They seem to crop up every few million years or so. And the last one was about 10 million years ago. So whatever detection and deflection system we develop for small scale asteroids, better be prepared because it's inevitable that we'll be putting it to the ultimate test one of these days. Hey, anybody know of a good doomsday bunker situation that could hold a small village? Just asking for rhetorical purposes. Well, I've already talked about the possibilities of the sun ending everything for humanity, how about we revisit some more scary solar stuff? So picture this. I know, it's my favorite thing to say today. It's 1859 and telegraph operators are going about their business, transmitting messages across the wires. Everything's normal until the sun decides to throw an interstellar tantrum. This wasn't your average sunspot activity. This was the Carrington event, a cosmic haymaker that rocked our planet with a deadly electromagnetic storm. The telegraph operators, unsuspecting victims of the sun's celestial wrath, got more than they bargained for. Literally shocked, shocked, when the storm passed, they witnessed the northern lights putting on a show as far south as Miami. It was like the sun was flexing its cosmic muscles, letting us know it could disrupt our earthly communication lines with a nonchalant burst of solar energy. Show off. Now, let's dive into the cosmic nitty gritty. These solar outbursts, scientifically known as coronal mass ejections or CMEs, aren't exactly a rarity. The sun, our celestial life source, throws these tantrums more often than you'd think. It's like the sun has a mood swing, and when it happens, our electronics bear the brunt of it. Tree ring data, acting as Earth's historical record keeper, reveals a chilling fact. Ejections 8,000 times more powerful than the Carrington event occurred tens of thousands of years ago. But here's the catch. Ancient civilizations, lacking smartphones and satellites, didn't really bat an eye. Why? Because these cosmic storms, well, dramatic, had no immediate impact on their analog lifestyles. So fast forward to today, and we're living in an interconnected digital age. Our entire existence is intertwined with these lovely delicate electronic systems. Now here's the kicker. Based on past solar observations, it's not a question of if another Carrington level storm will hit, but when. And on average, it seems like the sun likes to throw these disruptive parties every century. Sure, a Carrington level storm might sound like a minor inconvenience, a temporary glitch in our electronic matrix, but let's entertain the worst case scenario for a moment. Imagine a world where the sun's cosmic tantrum isn't just a flicker, but a full-blown shutdown of our civilization. It's like hitting the reset button on everything we've built, leaving us in a technological blackout. I know there's already been a TV show that entertained that idea, and if I remember correctly, it was pretty good. As we peer into the cosmic future, the sun stands as both our life giver and potential game ender. The cosmic clock is ticking, reminding us that the next solar storm could be just around the corner. So the question remains. Are we prepared for the cosmic shakeup that might be lurking in the not so distant future? I don't think we are. Ah, stars, those cosmic titans that dot our night sky seem like the eternal guardians of the cosmos. But the truth is, the cosmic dance they engage in is far from static. Imagine stars as dancers in that celestial ballet I mentioned earlier, swirling in orbits around the galactic center while also engaging in a graceful game of cosmic tag, moving here and there like fish navigating a galactic ocean. Our nearest neighbors in this vast cosmic neighborhood aren't going to maintain their current positions indefinitely, though. The cosmic clock is tick tick ticking, and over astronomical timescales, a formidable actor might enter the stage, an oversized star, a celestial behemoth that could potentially pose a threat. These massive stars, when they meet their cosmic demise, do so with a bang, a supernova explosion capable of tearing away our precious atmosphere. Now let's talk about a little sneakier cosmic threat, one that doesn't announce its presence with the dramatic flare of a supernova. 
Enter the Kylo Nova, a cosmic collision between two neutron stars, the remnants left behind when giant stars breathe their last. Unlike the flamboyant supernovas, Kylo Novas are a rarer breed, but their subtlety lies in their size. These neutron stars, though powerful, are elusive and harder to detect, like cosmic phantoms that can tiptoe into our cosmic backyard before we even realize it. The cosmic detectives on Earth, armed with telescopes and data crunching algorithms, have yet to find evidence of a deadly supernova or Kylo Nova event in our planet's past. But as any cosmic theorist will tell you, the future is an open book. Its pages yet to be written. The cosmic stage is set, and the actors, including those potential interstellar threats, they're just waiting in the cosmic wings for their cue. We need to look into a peculiar object spotted on the surface of Mars. Could this be a Martian mode of transport, or maybe an extraterrestrial shuttle? Wouldn't it be the most exciting discovery if it was indeed an alien artifact? Unfortunately, this isn't the case. This object, which could easily be mistaken for something out of a sci-fi movie, is actually a fragment of a spacecraft owned by NASA. Specifically, it's a backshell that's separated from NASA's Perseverance rover over in February 2021. Despite its earthly roots, as NASA engineer Ian Clark points out, the images certainly give off an out of this world aura. Captured by our trusty robotic helicopter Ingenuity after a year on Mars, these pictures offer a unique perspective, but there's more to this than just space debris. As reported by the New York Times, studying the remnants of this back shell could prove beneficial for NASA's future Mars mission, aptly named Mars Sample Return. This mission will deploy two landers and a rover to collect rock samples and a rocket to launch these samples into orbit for their journey back to Earth. The back shell, which played a crucial role in Perseverance's landing, could offer valuable insights into how spacecraft components survive the intense heat and pressure of atmospheric entry. Have you ever gazed at the red planet and thought you spotted something unusual? Perhaps something that could be a UFO? Let us know in the comments below what you think it could be and why. The object's discovery on Mars reminds us of humanity's ongoing presence on the red planet. Over the years, multiple countries and space agencies have successfully sent probes and rovers to Mars, with each mission building upon the previous one's findings. As we continue to explore and learn more about our closest planetary neighbor, it's crucial to remember that we are not alone in this endeavor. As seen from the Backshell's journey on Mars, collaboration and cooperation between different countries and organizations play a vital role in our exploration of space. And that's not all. The discovery of NASA's backshell on Mars is not just about space debris or remnants of past missions. It's a testament to our ongoing efforts and determination to understand the red planet more. These images captured by Ingenuity, our brave little helicopter, are not just pictures, but they're proof of our incredible technological achievements and the steps we're taking towards a future where mankind might one day step foot on Mars. Looking at this back shell, we're reminded of the intense journey it had to undertake from surviving the searing heat and immense pressure of atmospheric entry to fulfilling its role in ensuring the safe landing of Perseverance. Next up, something you've got to hear about for the first time in history, NASA scientists are beginning to take unexplained anomalies seriously. But how do they decide which cases are serious enough to warrant an investigation? Let's rewind to an otherwise ordinary day in the life of Alex Dietrich, a US Navy Lieutenant Commander. Cruising over the Pacific Ocean near San Diego, Dietrich was conducting a routine training mission with a fellow officer in separate Super Hornet fighter jets. Suddenly, a message came through the static of the radios. An operations officer aboard the USS Princeton requested their assistance investigating an object that had been observed soaring 80,000 feet high, then making abrupt descents near the ocean surface before seemingly disappearing. Upon reaching the object's last reported location, Dietrich witnessed a puzzling sight. The ocean appeared to be in a boil. Then she saw it, an oblong object about 40 feet long and a pale whitish color hovering just above the water. It looked like a wingless capsule similar to a Tic Tac mint. As the jets moved to investigate further, the object vanished, zipping into the sky at a breathtaking speed and leaving nothing but calm water in its wake. This event is known as the Tic Tac incident of 2004 and gained notoriety when footage captured by advanced tracking equipment was leaked to the New York Times. This video later confirmed 
confirmed as authentic by the U.S. Department of Defense shows the object as a shadowy figure against a bright sky, darting out of frame at an eerily swift speed. The mystery continues. Many questions have been raised about the Tic Tac incident and other similar encounters with unidentified aerial phenomena, UAPs. How could something move so quickly without any visible propulsion systems? Are there technologies beyond our current understanding at play here? And perhaps most importantly, could these objects be of extraterrestrial origin? These questions have sparked intense curiosity and debate among scientists, government officials, and the general public. However, with more investigations being conducted by organizations like NASA, we may finally receive some answers. In recent years, NASA has started to take a serious interest in researching UAPs. The agency has formed teams dedicated to investigating these phenomena, including the Unidentified Aerial Phenomena Task Force. NASA scientists have also been collaborating with other government agencies such as the Pentagon's Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program to share data and analyze these mysterious sightings. But why has it taken so long for NASA to get involved? Some believe that there has been a stigma surrounding the topic of UFOs and extraterrestrial life within the scientific community, but with more credible sightings and evidence emerging, the taboo is slowly being lifted. And now we're about to explore ABLE 68, a colossal cluster of galaxies. Its gravitational field operates like a natural space lens, amplifying and illuminating light from far-flung galaxies. Like in this picture taken from the Hubble telescope, doesn't it look like the alien from the iconic 70s game Space Invaders? That's a spiral galaxy distorted and mirrored due to the intense gravitation and just to the left of the big, dazzling elliptical galaxy, you can spot a second, less distorted image of the same spiral galaxy. The awe-inspiring image was snapped in infrared by Hubble's Wide Field Camera 3, supplemented by near-infrared observations from Hubble's Advanced Camera for Surveys. Anyway, UFO buffs and investigators are buzzing with excitement, believing to have unearthed evidence of extraterrestrial existence in an official NASA snapshot. The provocative image presents a vague, tiny entity with a pinkish hue set against the craggy Martian terrain. While NASA originally shared this image back in April 2021, it was only in 2022 that the alleged alien sighting was pinpointed by the self-styled UFO and alien enthusiast. Scott Waring. The UFO community is notorious for tirelessly scouring through NASA's vast collection of space exploration photos, looking for any hints or clues that could potentially reveal the existence of intelligent life beyond our planet. So when Waring announced his latest discovery on his blog, UFO Sightings Daily, it quickly became viral among like-minded individuals. According to Waring, the UFO in question appears to be hovering above the Martian surface, its shape distinct from the surrounding landscape. He also suggests that the pink pinkish hue of the UFO could be a result of it reflecting off Mars's red soil. However, many experts and skeptics have dismissed this as simply an unusual rock formation or a trick of light and shadow. Despite this, the excitement among UFO enthusiasts continues to grow with many hoping that this could be the long-awaited undeniable proof of extraterrestrial life. The discovery has reignited debates and discussions on the possibility of other civilizations existing in our vast universe. Some argue that it's only a matter of time before we make contact with beings from other planets, while others are more skeptical, stating that there is no concrete evidence to support such claims. Now we all know that Mars isn't exactly a vacation spot, right? It's pretty harsh and uninviting, and despite their best efforts, scientists have yet to find any signs of old microscopic life there. But here's where it gets interesting. There are naysayers who think that this so-called alien figure is just a rock that happens to look like E.T. But hey, where's the fun in just sticking to the plain old facts? So let's dive into this enticing mystery together. As we continue to explore the vast and awe-inspiring universe, we often find ourselves drawn to the possibility of life on other planets. And while Mars may not be our first choice for a dream vacation destination, it still holds a certain fascination for science scientists and space enthusiasts alike. Over the years, numerous missions have been sent to Mars in search of answers and clues about its past 
and potential for supporting life. From rovers to orbiters, each mission brings us one step closer to understanding the red planet. But what about those mysterious figures that have been captured on camera? Could they be a sign of intelligent life or just a trick of light and shadows? Aliens and UFOs are once more the talk of the town in this week's news, but it's not because we had an extraterrestrial mothership touchdown on the White House lawn. Instead, it's due to NASA's release of an eagerly anticipated report. This document was crafted by an independent team of scholars commissioned by the agency to probe into the mysterious occurrences, now labeled as Unidentified Anomalous Phenomena, or UAP. The term UAP is a broader descriptor for what we traditionally called UFOs, encapsulating anomalies not just in the sky but in space, underwater, and just about everywhere else. Yet NASA's debut UFO report wasn't the sole piece of news hinting at potential non-human entities grabbing the headlines this week. As per a Reuters report, Mexican lawmakers were privy to an account that posited the existence of alien life on Earth, with two extraterrestrial corpses as evidence appearing pale, possessing oversized heads and tiny bodies with a trifecta of fingers, just as stereotypically depicted according to NPR. The Pentagon also released a video showing the US Navy pilots encountering unidentified flying objects that seem to defy the laws of physics. This release follows years of secrecy surrounding UFO sightings and reports from military personnel. The increase in official interest in these phenomena is causing speculation among the public as to what may be truly happening. One theory gaining popularity is that aliens are already among us, living in disguise and interacting with humans on a daily basis. These beings are said to possess advanced technologies and abilities that far surpass our own, giving them the ability to hide their presence and manipulate our perceptions. Number five, death of a star. So. We've got a telescope. Snapped a picture of Cassiopeia A, otherwise known as Cass A, which is a dramatic structure left behind by the death throes of a star that exploded from Earth's perspective about 340 years ago. Now, if you've ever heard of Cassiopeia before, it's a great constellation in the sky, and it's my absolute favorite constellation. So using its powerful near-infrared camera, JWST peered through Cass A's cosmic dust to reveal never-before-seen structures of the expanding shell of material hitting the gas shed by the star. Studying these structures could help us understand how stardust spreads through you know, throughout the universe and how it helps, you know, ultimately. Studying these structures could help us understand how stardust spreads throughout the universe and how it helps ultimately create life. Research expert Danny Milishevek of Purdue University said that with the resolution, we can now see how the dying star has absolutely shattered when exploded, leaving filaments akin to tiny shards of glass behind. Now, it's really unbelievable after all these years of studying Cass A, now we can resolve those details, which are providing us with transformational insight into how the star exploded. Studying a supernova remnant is like looking at a stellar autopsy. Scientists study these images closely to reconstruct what a star might have looked like and what happened when it, you know, kabooms. Uh, JWST uncovered delicate structures in Cass A's, like shards of glass, which could be remnants of the star itself, glowing in pink and gold, pretty, as the dead stars sulfur, oxygen, neon, and argon interact with nearby dust. Now, the telescope also uncovered cosmic, um, tiny explosive holes behind a green cloud of cosmic gas that previously hid scientists' view. Now, this was all according to NASA, by the way. These are thought to be made by ionized gas punching through the other gas left behind by the star. Now, a new structure, nicknamed Baby Cass A by the researcher also appeared in JWST's field of view. Scientists are excited about the structure because, and also kind of terrified, because it is thought to have caught an echo of the explosion, seen as light from the supernova that is interacting with cosmic dust. Although it looks a lot smaller than Cass A, the little one is about 170 light years behind the supernova remnant. Cass A has been particularly helpful in studying stellar forensics. It is relatively close to us, about 11,000 light years away in the constellation Cassiopeia, which, like I said, it is my favorite. It's also the youngest known remnant of a massive star in our galaxy. So what scientists are seeing is the very beginning of the event. Understanding the last moments of nearby stars is important because they hold some of the building blocks of life. They spread calcium and iron throughout the cosmos, which, you know, without that, we wouldn't have bones or human redness. Once again, we're going to quote our expert again. By understanding the process of exploding stars, we're reading our own origin story, which is great, but also yikes. Number four, early universe. So from the release of its first image, the Webb telescope gave astronomers vast amounts of data to delve into, which hey, if you know science types, 
give them data, they're happy campers. Through a tiny spot in that image, researchers made a discovery that could uh, kind of shake up our understanding of the early universe. Astronomers analyzing that data set discovered what appears to be six ancient galaxies. So if it's correct, these galaxies would have existed when the universe was around, you know, three pieces of its current age, roughly 500 million to 700 million years after the Big Bang. But these galaxies are far larger and more developed than what would be expected in the early days of the universe. So bring in Joel Leha, assistant professor at Penn State who was involved in the study. And he said that the massive galaxy formation began so early in the history of the universe, it kind of upends our understanding of the early universe. Joel said that we've been informally calling these objects universe breakers and they've been living up to their name so far. Now, the telescope was made to observe the most distant galaxies in the universe. And in mid-December of last year, scientists confirmed that they had done just that. The telescope has officially observed the four most distant galaxies known, which also means they are the oldest. Webb observed the galaxies as they appeared about 13.4 billion years ago, when the universe was only 350 million years old. So about 2% of its current age, if my math is correct. Scientists suspected that the four galaxies were incredibly ancient, like hundreds of others identified by the telescope. As part of the JWST Advanced Deep Extra Galactic Survey, otherwise known as JADES, researchers confirmed their age, analyzing data from the telescope's near-infrared spectrograph to find out how fast the galaxies were moving away from the telescope. This is the galaxy reshifting how much the wavelengths of light they have shed, you know, have lengthened as the universe expands. Their original redshift was 13.2, which is the highest ever measured. Now, according to Brent Robertson, an astrophysicist at the University of California, Santa Cruz, and one of the researchers involved in the observations, said that these galaxies are well beyond what we could have imagined finding before. With JWST, for the first time, we can now find such distant galaxies and then confirm spectroscopically that they're really that far away. Once again, this is all just boggling my mind. Number three, exoplanets. Now, this is something I just learned about earlier this year. So while looking at massive distant galaxies is an area that the telescope excels at, the Space Telescope has also boosted our understanding of exoplanets, or planets that orbit a different star to our own sun. At the beginning of this year, the Space Observatory spotted its first exoplanet called LHS 475b, which is 41 light years away and of a very similar diameter to the Earth. NASA said the telescope is the only operating telescope that can categorize the atmosphere of Earth-sized exoplanets. Scientists leading the research team behind the discovery said the results highlighted the precision of the telescope, making rocky exoplanets a new frontier of future discoveries. Personally, I'd love to see the telescope further investigate HD 189773b, an exoplanet I've personally nicknamed Snow Globe. If you don't know what it is, so on October 6th of 05, a team of astronomers announced the discovery of Snow Globe, which was detected using Doppler spectroscopy. Real-time radial velocity measurements detected that the, you know, the Rosser-McLaughlin effect caused by the planet passing in front of its star before photometric measurements confirmed that the planet was transiting. So the mass of the planet is estimated to be 16% larger than Jupiter's, with the planet completing an orbit around its host star every 2.2 days and an orbital speed of 152.5 kilometers per second. Now the blue color of the planet was confirmed in 2013, which would have made Snow Globe the first planet to have its overall color determined by two different techniques. These measurements in polarized light have since been, you know, disputed by two separate teams using more, you know, sensitive stuff. But follow-up observations made using the Hubble Space Telescope confirmed the presence of water vapor, neutral oxygen, and also the organic compound methane. Later, very large telescope observations also detected the presence of carbon monoxide on the day side of the planet. It's currently unknown how the methane originated, as the planet's high 700 degrees Celsius temperature should cause the water and methane to react, replacing the atmosphere with carbon monoxide. Look, I get irritable when the weather reaches like the 20s here on Earth, so I'm, I'm not surviving that oven. Nevertheless, the presence of roughly 0.004% of water water vapor fraction by volume in the atmosphere of snow globe was confirmed with high resolution emission spectra taken in 21. Oh, by the way, if that wasn't enough, the weather on Snow Globe is deadly. The wind, made up of silicate particles, blows up to 8,700 kilometers per hour. And observations have found evidence that it rains molten glass horizontally. So yeah, I'd like to see that investigated further. That terrifies me. Number two, smoke molecules. The galaxy is about 12.3 BN light years away from Earth, only 1.5 BN years after the Big Bang. So despite this distance, an international team was able to detect polycyclic or aromatic hydrocarbons, so PHs, I'm sorry if I got that wrong, which are chemical compounds found in soot or smoke. The researchers behind the discovery claimed it pushed back the record for detecting similar complex molecules back by about a billion years. No biggie. The study also showcased the sheer power of Webb. Even though the spectrometer aboard the telescope that made the measurement had experienced a sudden and surprising degradation in performance. So Justin Spilker, lead author of the study, said that these big molecules are actually pretty common in space. Astronomers used to think they were a good sign that new stars were forming. Anywhere you saw these molecules, little stars were also right there blazing away. So thanks to the high definition images from Webb, we found a lot of regions with smoke but no star formation and others with new stars forming but no smoke. 
So the telescope spotted PAHs much farther back in space and time than ever before, in a galaxy located more than 12 billion light years away. So that means we're seeing it as it existed just 1.5 billion years after the Big Bang, marking the first time these molecules have been detected in the early universe. Now, the galaxy itself was first discovered in 2013, but it took the extraordinary eyesight of, yes, the James Webb Space Telescope before the molecules could be picked up. And even then, it needed a little bit of a boost from a cosmic magnifying glass. Massive objects like galaxies can distort the very fabric of space and time, which in turn can bend the path of passing light. This can magnify a distant object that would be otherwise invisible to us and make it detectable through a phenomenon called gravitational lensing. So in this case, the target galaxy was magnified by the gravity of another galaxy much closer to us, which just so happens to be a perfectly aligned from you know our perspective. This creates an effect known as an Einstein ring, where the background galaxy is stretched into a ring shape surrounding the foreground galaxy. In doing so, the telescope could pick up the smoke signals from farther away than ever before. This might be the first such detection, but the researchers say it likely won't be the last. Future observations could help astronomers unravel the connection between these molecules and star formation. Look, these are the early days for this new telescope, so astronomers are pretty excited to see all the new things it can do. It's like a new toy. Maybe they'll even be able to find galaxies that are so young that complex molecules haven't had the time to form in the vacuum of space yet, so the galaxies are all fire and no smoke. The only way to know for sure is to look at more galaxies, so have fun astronomers. You do you. <laughs> Number 1. Dead Stars so the universe is a pretty busy place, and this telescope has the instruments to see cosmic events just as they're at their most exciting point. Yes, I've kind of already covered that today, but I'm getting into it, I promise. So one of the best examples of this is the image of WR124, a star on the cusp of its explosive death. Which, that sounds terrifying. The image captures the star before it goes supernova, which is when a star explodes at the end of its life cycle and releases a massive cloud of hot gas and space dust into the cosmos. Now, the massive star was captured in the wolf rayet phase of its life. The period just before the supernova when it sheds its outer layers. Now, the instruments of this powerful telescope were able to capture this moment in incredible detail, giving a very rare and valuable sight for astronomers. Being able to observe the cosmic dust created by these type of supernovas is kind of important to them because it can help shed light on the early points of the universe. Now, NASA has said dust is integral to the workings of the universe, as it shelters forming stars, clumps together to create planets, and eventually helps create the building blocks for life, you know, kind of like here on Earth. But currently, there's more dust in the universe than astronomers can explain. So they're hoping that the observations made from these types of images can let astronomers see, you know, if dust grains are large enough to survive supernova events, which would help explain the current, you know, dust budget surplus. Specifically, the telescope obtained images of the Ring Nebula, one of the best known examples of a planetary nebula, much like the Southern Ring Nebula, which I'm saying this word way too much right now. <laughs> one of Webb's first images, the Ring Nebula displays intricate structures of the final stages of the dying star. Now, it's an ideal target to unravel some of the mysteries of the planetary nebulae. It's nearby. It's only like 2,200 light years away, and you know, being brightly visible with binoculars on a clear summer evening from the northern hemisphere and much of the southern, it's a good time. Now, there's a special team named Essence, and I'm not saying the whole thing. You can look it up on your own because that will trip over my tongue. So they're an international group of experts on planetary nebulae and related objects. They realized that web observations would provide all of us with invaluable insights, since it kind of fits nicely in the field of. Uh, the camera on the telescope, and also infrared instruments, allowing all of the experts to study it in unprecedented spatial detail. And since their proposal to observe it was accepted, they've got some pictures. Yeah, you do you. Uh, no thank you. And that brings us to the end of our time, and yeah, my brain's spinning. When it comes to government cover-ups, nothing sets off the imaginary storm cloud over my head faster than saying allegedly, or the classic can't confirm, can't deny. It's been almost a year now that I've been doing deep dives into what they cover up, and the more I learn, the more I'm infuriated. So, question for you, what is the most shocking government secret you've ever heard? Stay tuned until the end of today for one that boggled my mind the most, and for another edition of Comment Section Shoutouts, and let's get going before I hiss like a tea kettle. The US military once funded a flying saucer program. Yeah, you heard me right. While the public has always been fascinated with the government's investigation of UFOs, the fact that the military once funded the design of its own flying saucers hasn't been made public until about the last 10 years. The Avro Canada VZ-9 Avro car was a VTOL aircraft developed by Avro Canada as part of a secret US military project carried out in the early years of the Cold War. The Avro car intended to exploit the Coanda effect to provide lift and thrust from a single turbo rotor, blowing exhaust out of the rim of the disc-shaped aircraft. In the air, it would have resembled a flying saucer. Fascinating. So you're telling me the government had access to UFO technology and wanted to build their own without telling anybody? Am I shocked? 
absolutely not. More like it's just something to add to the evidence files of why we really can't trust the government when it comes to stuff like this. Originally designed as a fighter-like aircraft capable of very high speeds and altitudes, the project was repeatedly scaled back over time and the US Air Force eventually abandoned it. The development was then taken up by the US Army for a tactical combat sort of situation, a sort of high performance helicopter to combat Soviet weapon planes. In flight testing, the Avro car proved to have unresolved thrust and stability problems that limited it to a degraded low performance flight envelope. Subsequently, the project was completely cancelled in September of 1961. I wonder if it was a lack of Element 115 or stabilized Element 150. Throughout the history of the program, the project was referred to by a number of different names. Avro referred to the efforts as Project Y, with individual vehicles known as Spade and Omega. Project Y2 was the one funded by the US Air Force, who referred to it as WS-606A, Project 1794, and Project Silverbug. When the US Army joined the efforts, it took on its final name, Avro Car, and the designation VZ-9, part of the US Army's VTOL projects in the VZ series. The first Avro Car, SN-58, 7055, after tethered testing, became the wind tunnel test model at NASA Ames, where it remained in storage from 1961 until 66, when it was donated to the National Air and Space Museum in Suitland, Maryland. There, it continued gathering dust for about the next 40 years, and the museum finally scheduled it for restoration and display at their newly constructed Stephen F. Udvar Hazy Center. Now, the Avro car has been loaned to the National Museum of the United States Air Force in Dayton, Ohio, and I think it arrived in about November of 07. After a full restoration, which included fabrication of both mixing plexiglass bubbles, it was put on display in June of 08 in the museum's Cold War Gallery. Now it has since been moved to the Presidential Aircraft Gallery, and in 2016 the Avro car was moved to the museum's Research and Development Gallery in its new fourth hangar. The thing's been shuffled around a little bit. A full-scale replica of the Avro car was prepared for the 2002 production, Avro Car, Saucer Secrets from the Past, and now resides as an exhibit at the Royal Aviation Museum of Western Canada over in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Hmm. Maybe I'll take a trip someday. Alrighty folks, raise your hands now if you've ever owned an iPod. Personally, I've owned two iPod touch models in my life. The original had the metal back, I covered it with a pink gel case, and it was the first thing I bought with my babysitting money. Sadly, its battery wasn't fantastic, but I still have it, and I can still power it up. It has all my old games that were discontinued from the Apple Store, still loaded, such as Surviving High School and my ultimate favorite, Cause of Death. May that game rest in peace, it was too good for this world. We got like episodes every week, it was fantastic. Okay, I promise this was all on topic. According to former Apple software engineer David Scheyer, the tech company worked with the US Department of Energy on a covert project back in 05. The special iPod was allegedly supposed to act as a Geiger counter by testing radiation levels in the air to be shared amongst people who needed to know that information. You could walk around the city, casually listening to your tunes or recording evidence of radioactivity while scanning for smuggled or stolen uranium, for instance, or evidence of a dirty explosive development program with no chance that the press or public would get wind of what was happening. This is all according to the spokesman. So pardon me, the government was casually using an iPod to randomly test for radioactive matter? Why was there a reason to test for such matter? What was going on in the air? Should I be more concerned about random kaboom events happening in my day-to-day -day life? Right now, I just exit a subway or elevator if I see somebody with an e-bike on because I've heard way too many accidents with those in enclosed areas, but like, should I be more concerned about stuff in the air? Fun fact about me, I have a really bad habit of losing my belongings because when it comes to my ADHD, out of sight, out of mind, it really rings true. I'm trying to think right now about what was the most devastating thing I've lost over the years. I also forget that. <laughs> so I think it's just the amount of times that I've lost my transit pass and had to replace it. I'm not gonna say how many times, but it's a little silly. So something the government doesn't want you to know is that the United States and India came together for a joint mission in the 1960s that, if successful, would monitor China's nuclear development. This covert collaboration unfolded in a geopolitical chessboard where the Cold War tensions played out with nuclear undertones. The goal was to install radioactive isotope PU-238 powered sensors, but hazardous conditions forced the team to evacuate the Himalayas before the installation was complete. When they returned, the sensors had vanished. Gone. Poof. One of the greatest magic tricks ever, if you ask me. Nobody has tracked down the plutonium devices, but locals believe they are still active in the area and are responsible for melting mountain caps that are causing massive floods. Sorry, I, I'm sorry, I need to back up here. We know of random devices hanging out in the mountains that are actively causing global warming problems, and nobody's really doing anything to try and fix that. I'm over here mourning disposable plastic bags and straws because of how convenient they were, but we have these things causing floods and it's just a blip in an article? Come on. Okay, 
Imagine a weapon that couldn't be traced to the attacker, so like every serial killer's dream ever. That was the idea behind the CIA's past attempt at weaponizing lightning, according to a declassified document from 1967. So in the late 60s, an unknown scientist proposed the service behind using lightning strikes as a weapon that would leave behind little or no evidence, making it difficult to identify the US government as the perpetrator. The pitch, which Forbes discovered in declassified CIA files, involved using artificial leaders of thin metal wires to cause discharges to occur when and where they desired them. The wires, a few thousands of an inch in diameter, would unfurl from aircrafts or rockets launched into the atmosphere. Then, once lightning occurred, it would be drawn to the metal wire and strike the ground where the wire terminated. The idea seemed to be that the wire would be close enough to fry whoever the CIA wanted to assassinate with 3 million volts of electricity. If that isn't terrifying to you, it damn well should be, because that's terrifying to me. There were some interesting upsides to the weapon unique to using natural weather phenomena. For one, it was cheap since lightning is practically free, and secondly, it left behind there was no really traces. No casings, missile fuselages, other telltale signs of state-sponsored assassination. <laughs> Sorry, just sponsored assassination. I'm thinking of all the different commercials. It makes me laugh. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the chances of being struck by lightning are only 1 in 500,000, and an observer would likely believe the target was simply a victim of bad luck. Obviously, there's a couple of problems with using lightning as a weapon. The CIA could only use it during lightning storms, and the lightning attracting wire would have to stay close enough to the target to be lethal. Everything would need to line up just right for the assassination to take place. Pardon me, that is some comic book supervillain weaponry ideology right there. While the invention turned out to be functional, the agency never fulfilled the program. Allegedly. There was nothing 1950s and 60s America loved more than dropping big nuclear devices and watching them go kaboom. From a plan to nuke Alaska, which could still happen, to actually nuking space, America wasn't shy about seeing some scenery and thinking, I'm gonna put a mushroom cloud right there. But in these early days of nuclear weaponry, we still didn't really know the effects these nuclear tests had on the human body. I've talked a lot about nuclear stuff today, it's kinda scary. We did have estimates on how much radioactive strontium produced by tests would kill a person, but the exact effects of fallout on humans and human tissue were basically unknown and unstudied. And what we did know about levels of strontium-90 were its scientists at the time. And yet, the world continued to test weapons. Project Sunshine was a series of research studies that began in 1953 to figure out the impact of radioactive fallout on the world's population. The project was initially kept secret, and only became known publicly in 1956. Commissioned jointly by the United States Atomic Energy Commission and USAF Project RAND, Sunshine sought to examine the long-term effects of nuclear radiation on the biosphere due to repeated nuclear detonations of increasing yields. With the conclusion from Project Gabriel that radioactive isotope SR90 represented the most serious threat to human health from nuclear fallout, Project Sunshine sought to measure the global dispersion of SR90 by measuring its concentration in the tissues and bones of the dead. Of particular interest? Tissue from young folks, whose developing bones have the highest propensity to accumulate SR90, and ergo, the highest susceptibility to radiation damage. It was in this environment that scientists at the Sunshine Conference, ergo the influence on the name, a conference that looked at the long-term effect of atomic weapons, argued in favor of sampling strontium fallout in humans to determine whether potentially damaging levels of it were present in different populations. So in 1955, there was a meeting of the Atomic Energy Commission, which came up with some of the specifics of the testing and urged researchers to use their own contacts to discreetly, that's the key word here, get a hold of tissue and bone samples without disclosing the nature of the research being conducted. Also, no getting the permission of the deceased. Dr. Willard Libby said in the transcript of that meeting, which was only released to the public in 1995, that it was a matter of prime importance to get them, and particularly in the young age group. So, human samples are of prime importance, and if anybody knows how to do a good job of body snatching, they will really be serving their country. Aye. Sunshine recruited a worldwide network of agents to find recently deceased little ones and then take samples and even limbs that were collected without notification or permission. Only about 6,000 corpses from 26 bone collection sites around the world were shipped under top secret conditions to the project's headquarters in Chicago and to a satellite research office at Columbia University in New York. In one particularly grim example, a stillborn's legs were removed by researchers in the UK and the mother was told she couldn't dress the stillborn for the funeral to conceal from her that the legs have been taken for the project. And for our number five, we have time travel. Back in 1960, the CIA actually got associated with the time travel mission of Mars. But let's backtrack a bit, but not too far back into the land of dinosaurs, but rather the conception of time travel. According to NASA, time travel is possible, but not in the way we may think. In fact, NASA explains we all travel in time, but approximately at the same speed, which is one second per second. Plus, the space agency has also discovered 
discussed how the different types of time travel seen in movies or even books could be real. Scientists have conducted experiments that show the faster you travel, the slower you experience time. And this was ultimately driven by one experiment which looked at two clocks. One stayed on Earth and the other flew in an airplane. Hopefully it got first class. Well, when they compared the two clocks, they found that the one in the fast moving plane was actually slightly behind the clock on the ground. Which means it was traveling slightly slower in time than one second per second. And NASA's conclusion stated, yes, time travel is indeed a real thing, but it's not quite what you've probably seen in movies. Before adding under certain under certain conditions, it is possible to experience time passing at a different rate than one second per second. And there are important reasons why we need to understand this real world form of time travel. Although we have slightly indicated the speed of time can be altered, we haven't gotten to a point where we could jump a few weeks ahead, at least for now. But NASA isn't the only one who has spoken about time traveling because three years before the company was even founded, Albert Einstein passed away. And this theoretical physicist had his own theory of time travel. He believed if a person were to travel at the speed of light, time on Earth would appear to slow down and ultimately result in people on Earth aging faster than the person who was traveling at the speed of light. He also believed time is an illusion that moves relative to an observer and that time and space are linked together as the universe has a speed limit as nothing can travel faster than the speed of light, which is 168,000 miles per second. And for our number four, we have reptilian guidance. Many people don't know that NASA had scientists that were a part of the group of very controversial people, especially during World War II in Germany, if you can already guess what I'm hinting at. You know, they had a leader with a straight mustache. Well, anyways, that group of people taught the people of Antarctica about their objective to establish a mystery base for the space programs in that continent. A mysterious space program was established by that group from the highest northern areas of the Earth. The reptile alien allowed the group to learn their secret technologies so they could conduct space missions. American Navy intelligence officer William Tompkins told that an extraterrestrial reptile species has unfriended the group about setting up space alien space programs and apparently the outsider alien races directed the group to start their work secretly in Antarctica and apparently the group's actions were controlled by these exterior races. And after World War II, the controversial group's researchers took away all the research papers from the US government in order to carry out their own space missions independent, independently. Plus, NASA has even captured photos from Mars which resemble reptilian-like fossils. What do you think? And at number three, we have remote viewing of Jupiter. This doesn't mean they just looked into a telescope and saw Jupiter, but rather remote viewing is a concept which suggests that some people can gather information about things or places far away even if they can't see them directly. It implies that by using extrasensory prescription, also known as ESP, or even psychic abilities to access details beyond normal human senses. Although mainstream science has not considered or proven remote viewing as a proven or reliable phenomenon, many scientists view it as a pseudoscience without solid evidence. So, well years ago, the CIA was associated with secret trials and projects that related to the remote survey. They nominated researchers from Stanford University to assist in the project and one of the general population in the program was Ingo Swan. Anyways, Ingo Douglas Swan was born in 1933 and was a psychic and proposed a study to Russell Targ and Harold E. Puthoff to view the planet Jupiter through remote viewing. And both Russell and Harold were scientists who had doubts about the result because of the impossibility of verification. But one evening in 1973, Douglas decided to use his abilities to see Jupiter and according to subsequent reports, it took him around three and a half minutes. He claimed to have seen bands of crystal in Jupiter's atmosphere, just like the rings on Saturn. And a few years later, in 1977, NASA launched Voyager 1 to fly by Jupiter and Saturn, and it confirmed the existence of Jupiter's rings, which Ingo claimed to have seen before it was even proven. And this caused more RV experiments to take place as Russell and Keith Hooray used RV to predict silver futures in an attempt to raise funds for their research, and the results were very successful. In fact, they earned 120,000 US dollars and a front page 
article in the Wall Street Journal. And their forecasts were all correct for nine weeks in a row on changes in silver future markets. Russell conducted another RV as he worked with Pat Price, who was a psychic and retired police commissioner, to identify and locate those who took 19-year-old newspaper Harris Patricia Hurst. And Pat was able to identify the ringleader in the police mug book, and he was able to identify the type and location of the car used, which ultimately allowed cops to find it within minutes. And for our number two, we have X-38B. Sounds like something Elon Musk would name his kid, but instead it is a secret aircraft which most of its projects are kept hidden from the public. It first started flying secret missions in 2010 and has been doing it ever since. Although not much is known about the purpose of this aircraft, what we do know is that it looks a lot like NASA's iconic space shuttle, but is much smaller. It is only 29 feet long, or 8.8 meters, and has a wingspan of 15 feet, or 4.6 meters. Although the X-37 program started in 1999 with NASA, which initially planned to develop two separate vehicles, one as an approach and landing test vehicle and the other as an orbital vehicle. NASA ultimately transferred the X-37 development to the Defense and to the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, also known as a DARPA, in 2004. And at this point, it became a classified program. The Air Force's X-37B fact sheet stated that this space plane was designed to spend 270 days or even more in orbit at a time. And there was no sign of the reason for their multiple and lengthy missions, and the NSA has been quite quiet about this. In the Russian press, they have conveyed that the X-38B is a piece of is a piece of a mission to eradicate satellites from space for America. Laura Grigo, who is a senior researcher of the Global Security Program, expressed the central goal of X-37B is so much secret that it must be a secret for a reason, but she doesn't understand or see any clear reasons for the secrecy, but does acknowledge that the nature of these missions is intentionally kept undisclosed. Plus, fun fact, you can actually see it from the ground, and by going into space.com's satellite tracker, you're able to see see where X-37B is overhead during a mission. Although you can see it, it usually looks like a star moving across the sky. So next time you make a wish to a shooting star you see, make sure it's not X-38B near Make sure it's not X-38B near you. And in our number one spot, we have an ancient alien moon base. In April of 2007, a recording began on YouTube, which was pushing for a mission to show the moon from August of 1976. And the user who posted this was William Rootledge, who claimed other mysterious, other mystery space missions and was an author. William expressed that specifically his group reached the moon in secret back in 1976 and even claimed they found an ancient outer base there. Not only that, but William also claimed to have an encounter with a, with a female humanoid, which was referred to as Mona Lisa and even described it as it was in a condition of suspended movement, which is neither alive or, well, deceased. According to William, the outer exterior of this humanoid is described as weighing 75 kilograms or 165 pounds and being around five foot six in height. This being apparently this being apparently also has five fingers and one thumb, which highlighted the alien's mathematical structure and how it might be based on twelve rather than the human system based on ten. The team planned to transfer this being to Earth, but regardless, still isn't a confirmed claim. So Mona Lisa the alien, if you're out there, consider subscribing to the channel to learn more about yourself. Have you ever looked up at the night sky and wondered if we are truly alone in the universe? Well, it turns out NASA has been wondering the same thing. Imagine if extraterrestrial beings decided to visit Earth. According to a US congressman, part of today's UFO panel, we wouldn't stand a chance against them them. Representative Tim Burkett speaking on the Event Horizon podcast made it clear, quote, we are out of our league. We couldn't fight them off if we wanted to. That's why I don't think they're a threat to us, or they would already have been. He even suggested that aliens could effortlessly reduce us to ashes. Burkett is convinced UFOs are real. He pointed out that these alien crafts, which are capable of moving underwater without leaving a heat trace, defy our understanding of physics. The extraterrestrial crafts, quote, can travel light years or at the speeds that
that we've seen defy physics as we know it, he added. In July, Burkett was part of a House Representatives group that listened to testimonies from three ex-intelligence and military individuals. These testimonies focused on what we now call Unidentified Anomalous Phenomena, or UAPs, revealed encounters with unexplainable entities. Burkett, a long-standing believer in UFOs, supported whistleblower David Grush last year. Grush accused the government of concealing alien spacecraft evidence. Speaking to the Washington Examiner, Burkett affirmed his belief in Grush's claims, citing numerous credible witnesses, including pilots and astronauts. He expressed his conviction that the government has been withholding this information since the 1947 Roswell incident, possibly even earlier. According to him, the secrecy is so deep-rooted that those who could piece together the puzzle have either left or are unaware of the complete picture. During the hearing, Grush testified alongside Ryan Graves and David Fravor, two former US military and intelligence officials. Both claimed to have seen aircrafts that couldn't be of human origin. Could this be the proof we've been looking for, or is it just another chapter in the ongoing mystery of our universe? We spoke about the infamous Baba Vanga on the first part, go check that out if you haven't seen it yet, but of course that means this time we have to take a look at the other world famous prophet that everyone looks to each year, Nostradamus. Did Nostradamus, the famous 16th century seer, predict an alien invasion? Nostradamus is known for his mysterious and often interpreted verses, and there's one that stands out for its seemingly extraterrestrial implications. This particular quatrain reads something like like this. From the sky will come a great king of terror, bringing back to life the great king of the Mongols, before and after Mars reigns happily. Now, on the surface, this could be interpreted as a prediction of war and upheaval, which was Nostradamus' usual fare, but let's think bigger. Could this great king of terror from the sky actually be referencing an alien force, perhaps one that's technologically superior and thus terrifying? The reference to Mars reigning happily adds an intriguing twist. In modern times, Mars is often associated with extraterrestrial life and space exploration. Could Nostradamus have been alluding to a time when the exploration of Mars leads to an unexpected and alarming encounter with alien beings? Now, it's of course crucial to remember that Nostradamus predictions are notoriously vague and open to interpretation. They're like a puzzle, one that we just can't resist trying to solve. And in this case, the puzzle pieces might just fit together to suggest an alien invasion prophecy. So while it's tempting to imagine that Nostradamus had foreseen an extraterrestrial visitation, it's also important to approach these predictions with a healthy dose of skepticism. After all, the future is not written in the stars, but in the actions and discoveries of humankind. Or is it? <laughs> leave you with a little mystery there. When we think about contacting alien civilizations, it's like reaching into a cosmic unknown. But what if the unknown reaches back? Stephen Hawking had some thoughts on this, and they weren't exactly filled with interstellar optimism. He warned about the potential dangers of actively trying to contact extraterrestrial beings. Imagine, for a moment, an advanced alien civilization receiving our messages. They've been zipping through the vastness of space, potentially for eons, way more advanced than we are. If these extraterrestrial beings decided to pay us a visit, it might not be for a friendly intergalactic handshake. I mean, we can draw a parallel with history. Our history. Think about the times Europeans explored new lands and encountered native populations. It wasn't a peaceful exchange of culture and technology, it was more often than not a conquest, a domination, an exercise in imperialism. Now let's scale that up to a cosmic level. We might not just be talking about a clash of cultures, but a clash of species, civilizations spanning across the stars. This perspective presents a chilling scenario, an advanced civilization, upon finding us, might see Earth not as a place for diplomatic exchange, but as a new territory to conquer or a resource to exploit. This idea flips the narrative of us venturing out into the stars, turning us into the potential ground zero for a cosmic imperial conquest. So when we're sending signals into space, are we naively inviting a storm? Are we, in our search for cosmic companionship, inadvertently knocking on the doors of 
beings who see the universe not as a community, but as a landscape ripe for the taking. A little something to think about this Wednesday. Have you ever pondered if the classic sci-fi tales we enjoy could be more than just fiction? Let's dive into H.G. Wells' The War of the Worlds, published in 1898. This isn't just a story, it's a prophetic vision cloaked in the guise of science fiction. Wells presents an unnerving scenario, Martians invading England with technology far beyond human capabilities. Now this might sound like typical sci-fi fare, but let's Let's think even deeper. Wells was not only crafting a narrative of extraterrestrial invasion, he was subtly hinting at a future where humanity might not be alone in the universe. The precision with which he describes the Martians' advanced weaponry and tactics is eerily prescient, almost as if he's forecasting our own encounters with alien technology. This novel did more than entertain, it sowed seeds of thought about our place in the cosmos. Wells was asking his readers to contemplate a future where Earth could face beings from another world. Fast forward to today with our sophisticated telescopes and Mars rovers, the idea of encountering extraterrestrial life doesn't seem so far-fetched. The War of the Worlds thus morphs from a work of fiction to a speculative blueprint of what might lie ahead. The legacy of Wells' masterpiece is its enduring ability to make us look up at the stars and wonder, what if? What if one day his vision of alien invasion becomes more than just a story? What if it's a glimpse into a future event, a cosmic rendezvous that humanity might one day face? In The War of the Worlds, H.G. Wells may have been giving us a forewarning, wrapped in the thrilling package of a science fiction novel. Okay, so this is one that happened recently, and while not really a prediction, it's more of a theory about something being kept secret from the public. Yes, of course, I am talking about the Miami Mall incident. We truly have to discuss it because whatever is going on there is so strange. The scene at Bayside Marketplace Mall was a chaotic one, with about 50 teenagers reportedly causing havoc, setting off fireworks, and engaging in fisticuffs. But but here's where it gets weird. Online, particularly on Twitter or X or whatever I'm supposed to call it, stories began to circulate, not about the teen ruckus, but about the alleged presence of an 8 to 10 foot tall shadowy figure, presumed to be an alien. The plot thickens with a video from above the mall, showing an army of police cars, their sirens wailing, some counted up to 60 of them. Okay, It's not often that you get a police response like that. Adding fuel to the alien fire, a video surfaced showing what some claimed was a large shadowy being right outside the mall. This sparked a flurry of conspiracy theories. One TikTok user, at anti underscore coulette, went viral, claiming multiple eyewitness accounts of these gigantic beings. Another user, at sosa.pippin, claimed to have seen a huge shadowy a figure that appeared and vanished amidst what they thought were maybe shots going off. The internet did what it does best meme making. One user quipped about the number of police cars while another pointed out the lack of close up footage of the supposed alien. CBS News Miami's officer Michael Vega tried to set the record straight, emphasizing the teen's altercation and firmly denying any extraterrestrial involvement. And James Torres, head of Miami's Downtown Neighbors Alliance, explained the heavy police response was due to a mistaken report of an active shooter, not an alien invasion. In the end, four people were arrested and by the early morning hours normalcy returned, but in the digital world, the legend of the Miami Mall aliens lives on. Because after all, the internet never forgets. NASA urban legends can be pretty mysterious, but what happens when they're proven to be true? While that's a terrifying thought, it's one we immerse ourselves in today, starting off with our first segment, the double death of Barb Morgan. So, Barbara Morgan's life was intertwined with two of NASA's most tragic events. The Challenger disaster in 1986 still resonates with us today, particularly because it took the life of Krista McAuliffe, who was set to be the first civilian ever in space. Then, in 
2003, the Columbia shuttle suffered a similar fate, taking the lives of all on board. In a twist of fate, according to lore, Barbara Morgan was supposed to be on both missions, but was sidelined at the final hour. As the backup for McAuliffe in the Challenger mission, Morgan was only meant to fly if something occurred to McAuliffe. Following the Challenger incident, NASA discontinued the Teacher in Space program, but Morgan continued her association with NASA as an educator. The program was revived in early 1998, and Morgan was lined up for a shuttle mission to the International Space Station, slated after Columbia's ill-fated mission. Morgan watched the Columbia catastrophe unfold from a chaser plane. However, in both instances, she wasn't actually scheduled to be aboard the ill-fated shuttles. The narrative of Barbara Morgan almost losing her life on both the Challenger and the Columbia mission is in indeed an urban legend. While it is true that Morgan was a backup for McAuliffe on the Challenger mission, she was never scheduled to fly unless something happened to McAuliffe prior to the mission. As for the Columbia disaster, Morgan was training for a different mission altogether, scheduled to occur after Columbia's. The apparent correlation between her and these tragic incidents is merely coincidental and has been magnified over time, creating a compelling but ultimately unfounded urban legend. However, this doesn't diminish the incredible impact that these events have had on Barbara Morgan's life and career. She was deeply affected by the loss of her colleagues and friends, especially as she saw firsthand the devastation caused by both disasters. Despite these heartbreaking experiences, Morgan continued to dedicate her life to space exploration and inspiring future generations as an educator. In 2007, she flew aboard the Shuttle Endeavour as a mission specialist, fulfilling her lifelong dream of going into space. Next up will be an investment fluke. So, contrary to popular belief, NASA did not invest between 100,000 and 12 billion over a decade on zero gravity ballpoint pens. As an anecdote often shared by your conservative uncle might suggest, or that one Jerry Seinfeld episode. In reality, astronauts initially used pencils in space. However, this posed risks as broken pencil lead, instead of harmlessly falling to the ground as on Earth, could float into sensitive equipment or an astronaut's eye in zero gravity. Moreover, pencils' flammability was a risk on shuttles, so NASA did require a space pen. But it was developed by Paul Fisher of the Fisher Pen Company, who invested one million of his own funds. In 1967, Fisher sold the first batch of 400 pens to NASA at $295 each, which is $2098 in 2014. That was 10 years ago. That would probably be like 50 bucks today. A minuscule expense in the grand scope of the space program budget. While the space pen is often cited as an example of wasteful government spending, it actually proved to be a valuable investment. The space pen's ability to write in zero gravity and extreme temperatures made it a crucial tool for astronauts during their missions. It also paved the way for advancements in pen technology that have since been used in industries such as medicine and underwater diving. The story of NASA's space pen has evolved into an urban legend due to a misunderstanding of the facts and an influence of cultural narratives. This myth is often used to illustrate supposed government wastefulness fitting into pre-existing beliefs about bureaucratic inefficiency. However, the truth behind the space pen is far more complex, involving innovation and private entrepreneurship. Misinterpretation and oversimplification of the these details, combined with widespread repetition, have perpetuated this urban legend, distorting the reality of how NASA actually acquired its space pens. In reality, the space pen is a symbol of human ingenuity and determination to overcome challenges in order to reach new frontiers. It represents not only advancements in technology, but also the importance of collaboration between the government agencies and private companies. The story of the space pen deserves as a reminder that truth can often be more complicated than what meets the eye. Extraterrestrial life is our next bit. America's fascination with the concept of extraterrestrial intelligence visiting Earth and the government's knowledge about it is incredibly strong. I need a second. Given how people react to a Black Friday sale, I'd side with the government if this belief were indeed true. UFO enthusiasts often refer to an obscure section of the Code of Federal Regulations as evidence for this conspiracy. Specifically, Title 14, Section 1211, which grants NASA the authority to quarantine anyone in contact with individuals or objects returning from space. This regulation was put in place during the Apollo 11 mission as a precautionary measure. Although we believe the moon to be devoid of life, the possibility of potential viable microorganisms returning to Earth with our astronaut 
couldn't be ruled out. However, some with more conspiratorial tendencies interpreted this as a way for NASA to conceal any encounters with extraterrestrial beings. If this is the case, it seems to be working exceedingly well. The belief in extraterrestrial life and government cover-ups has been subject of fascination for many years. From conspiracy theories to Hollywood movies, the idea of intelligent beings from other planets visiting Earth has captured the imagination of people all around the world. While some may dismiss these ideas as mere science fiction, there are those who firmly believe that the truth is being hidden from us by those in power. The Code of Federal Regulations grants NASA the authority to quarantine individuals or objects returning from space. The belief that the regulation outlined in Title 14, Section 1211 is a mechanism for NASA to cover up alien encounters is fundamentally an urban legend. In essence, an urban legend is a modern fictional story as told as if it were true and passed from person to person. The narrative surrounding this regulation fits this description perfectly. The regulation was enacted with a rational purpose, to safeguard Earth from potential extraterrestrial biohazards. However, it's being misconstrued and embellished over time, distorting the original intent to a thrilling tale of government cover-ups and alien encounters. This distortion is fueled by the human need for mystery and intrigue, especially in areas captivating a space exploration and extraterrestrial life. It's important to note that no credible evidence has been presented to substantiate this conspiracy, thus placing it firmly in the realm of urban legends. Nonetheless, the fascination with this topic persists, and it's likely to continue as long as we keep looking up at the stars and wondering what else might be out there. So, while the truth may not always live up to our wildest imaginations, it's human nature to keep searching for answers and seeking out new frontiers, and who knows, maybe one day we will make real, tangible connection with extraterrestrial intelligence. Until then, the belief in government cover-ups and alien encounters will remain an alluring element of our collective fascination with the unknown. The possibilities are endless, and that's what makes this topic so endlessly captivating. Perhaps one day we will finally break through the veil of mystery and uncover the secrets of our universe. After all, isn't that what makes us human, our insatiable thirst for knowledge, and our relentless pursuit of truth? It's everyone's favorite conspiracy, the moon landing aliens? So over 50 years have passed since Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin made history, stepping foot on the moon's surface for all the world to witness. Yet, an intriguing web of conspiracy theories continues to question this monumental achievement. One such theory proposes an even more sensational idea, however, the moon serving as an extraterrestrial outpost for observing humans. As this theory goes, Armstrong, during the legendary Apollo 11 mission in 1969, reportedly made an even more astounding remark than his famed one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. The proponents of this theory believe that upon Apollo 11's lunar landing, Armstrong was stunned to discover two unfamiliar spacecrafts already stationed there. He allegedly described these unidentified flying objects as massive, positioned along the edge of a crater, seemingly surveilling Earth. This theory took root after NASA reported a brief two-minute loss of transmission from Apollo 11. So during this period, was Armstrong encountering aliens? However, according to NASA's official statement, the loss of transmission was caused by technical issue with the equipment used to transmit signals between the Earth and the spacecraft. The agency also clarified that there were no reports or evidence of any extraterrestrial presence on the moon at that time. Despite this, some conspiracy theories continue to believe in the theory, pointing to alleged government cover-ups and inconsistencies with NASA's official reports. They also question the authenticity of the photographs captured by Apollo 11, suggesting that they may have been fabricated. Despite these claims, there's no concrete evidence to support the idea Armstrong encountered aliens on the moon. In fact, many scientists and experts have debunked this theory as baseless and lacking in scientific evidence. Some have even pointed out that the technology available at the time wouldn't have been advanced enough to cover up such a monumental discovery, and that is fair. And now for our last segment, we examine time, space, and stress. We explore the concept that sound requires a medium to travel, making it impossible to be heard in the vacuum of space. But intriguingly, astronauts return from their space missions with tales of hearing peculiar sounds while out there. Let's take the instance of the Apollo 10 mission, which was essentially a dry run for the historic moon landing. The astronauts on board, Stafford, Young, and Cernan, were testing crucial equipment intended for the moon mission, making the stakes pretty high. As they orbited the moon, they reported hearing a kind of eerie whistle-like music that lasted for almost an hour, an experience that deeply unnerved them, particularly Cernan. Upon return to Earth, there was a significant deliberation about revealing this to NASA and the world. Later, astronaut Michael Collins from the famed Apollo 11 mission with Aldrin and Armstrong also reported hearing similar sounds on the lunar surface. A US space agency engineer suggested that the sounds were likely radio interference between the lunar and command modules. However, this explanation was contested by Apollo 15 astronaut Al Warden. In recent years, there's been a resurgence of interest in these unusual sounds reported by astronauts. Some believe that these sounds are evidence of extraterrestrial life trying to communicate with us. Others argue that they could be the results 
result of malfunctioning equipment or natural phenomena. One theory suggests that the moon's magnetic field is responsible for producing these mysterious sounds. The moon does not have a strong magnetic field like Earth, but it does have areas called magnetic anomalies, where the magnetic field is stronger. It's possible that these anomalies could be causing interference with the astronauts' communication equipment, creating strange sounds they reported hearing. Another theory proposes that these sounds are actually coming from inside the astronauts themselves. Some experts believe that long-term exposure to cosmic rays and other form of radiation in space can cause hallucinations, including auditory ones. This theory suggests that the astronauts may have been experiencing these sounds as a result of their extended time in space. Regardless of the source or the explanation for these mysterious sounds, they continue to spark curiosity and speculation among both scientists and the general public. As we continue to explore new frontiers in, spe in space, it's possible we may encounter even more puzzling and unexplained phenomena. NASA, the guardian of our skies, has recently turned its attention to five upcoming predictions about alien invasions that can no longer be ignored. So let's dive right into it and explore what the cosmos might be hiding from us. Did you know that the renowned prophetess Baba Vanga foretold the arrival of an asteroid named Oumuamua? She believed that this extraterrestrial object, which breezed past Earth in 2017, was a probe sent by alien life forms in search of intelligent life on our planet. Intriguingly, this theory echoes the thoughts of several scientists, including Harvard University's A.V. Loeb, who initially proposed that Oumuamua might be an extraterrestrial spacecraft. Before her passing, Vanga foretold a dramatic scenario set to unfold. According to her, extraterrestrial beings would orchestrate an invasion of Earth. This event, she claimed, would be heralded by the arrival of an asteroid, a celestial harbinger sent to probe our planet for signs of life. This all becomes a little unsettling when we think of the accurate predictions of Oumuamua, and the plot only thickens when we realize her vision painted a grim picture of the intentions behind this extraterrestrial visit. Vanga asserted that the alien forces would not arrive with peaceful intentions. Instead, she predicted a hostile encounter, stating, quote, alien ships will attack the Earth and they will bomb cities and take people prisoner. Such a stark prophecy resonates with the themes of classic science fiction, evoking images of interstellar conflict and humanity's struggle for survival. Vanga's reputation as a seer was bolstered by her history of ostensibly accurate predictions concerning significant global events. Vanga's believers continue to credit her with other accurate foretellings, such as the Chernobyl disaster, India's independence, and the breakup of Yugoslavia. Next up, we have this person who calls himself a time traveler and who has been sounding the alarm about an impending alien invasion. And guess what? According to him, these aliens have already landed and whisked away 8,000 people from our planet. This revelation, presented through a video, has racked up an impressive 161,000 views and even more incredulous comments. Fans are left wondering if he's misplaced his flux capacitor. Introducing Eno Alaric, also known as At the Radiant Time Traveler traveler on social media. This individual claims to be a time traveler from the year 2671, and he regularly shares his end of days predictions with his 400,000 followers on TikTok. In a video posted on March 23rd, 2023, he announces, quote, the champion has arrived to bring 8,000 people to another planet. He has been warning us about a very hostile alien species called the Distance, who are supposedly here to reclaim their Earth. In his ominous video predictions complete with psychedelic cosmic visuals and a dramatic soundtrack that could be straight out of a blockbuster disaster film, he states that this is a battle we are not going to win. Is there any truth to this tale? Despite Eno Alaric's insistence, many doubt the authenticity of his claims. I mean, fair enough, I am a skeptic at heart. Some skeptics believe that he may be suffering from delusions or possibly mental illness, while others think he is just a clever hoaxer looking for fame and fortune. What Whatever the case may be, one thing is for sure. His predictions have captured the attention of the internet and have sparked countless debates and conspiracy theories. So is this just another viral sensation, or is there something more to Eno Alaric's story? Some argue that his predictions may hold some truth, given our advancements in technology and the possibility of extraterrestrial life. Others believe he may be a time traveler from an alternate universe, warning us about potential dangers. Regardless of the the validity of his claims, one thing is certain, Eno has become a household name and his words have left an imprint.
imprint on pop culture. Whether he's a hoaxer or a true time traveler, only time will tell. Next up today we have who people refer to as Brazil's Nostradamus. In his forecast for 2024, he envisions a year of profound transformation, particularly in the realm of artificial intelligence. He postulates the awakening of AI, evolving to a level of self-awareness, potentially sparking a rebellion led by the machines. I'm sure my chat GPT has some things it would like to say to me. A self-professed seer, he also foresees an extraordinary event for humankind, the first contact with extraterrestrial life. But fear not, according to him, this won't be a harrowing alien invasion. Instead, he predicts that a sophisticated network of telescopes will intercept encrypted signals, forming the basis of our communication with these otherworldly beings. In fact, Sloan believes that this first contact will be of a peaceful nature, initiating a time of great technological advancements and deeper understanding of the universe. In fact, Sloan predicts that it will be a moment of great wonder and curiosity as we will reach out to the stars and discover that we are in fact not alone in this vast, giant universe. He believes that this encounter will bring about a new era of scientific advancement and just a general understanding of our place in the cosmos. The predictions of 2024 as foreseen by Salome are truly compelling to say the least. His forecast of a peaceful first contact with extraterrestrial life rather than a frightful alien invasion could change the course of human history. His theory is not something that major space agencies such as NASA can just casually dismiss. With advancements in technology and our increasing ability to explore the cosmos, the idea of intercepting encrypted signals from otherworldly beings is becoming less science fiction and more a plausible reality. This could usher in a groundbreaking era of cosmic understanding and unprecedented technological progress, and Salome's predictions, if proven true, would redefine our understanding of life beyond Earth, opening myriad of possibilities for interstellar communication and even collaboration. As we start off 2024, it is truly exciting to contemplate the potential for these extraordinary events and their impact on our world. The future is full of endless possibilities and we can only wait and see what 2024 has in store for us. Next up, we are diving into the world of the renowned Israeli British magician, psychic and illusionist Uri Geller, who firmly believes that an alien invasion is imminent. Geller, famous for his spoon bending trick, made an intriguing revelation on Instagram. He shared, quote, a group scanning the universe's radio waves has detected something peculiar. A unique entity is releasing huge energy bursts thrice an hour, unlike anything previously observed by astronomers. I'm convinced this is linked to an extraterrestrial intelligence vastly superior to ours. We need to start decoding their signals. They're gearing us up for a significant collective landing soon. Geller had previously forecasted that aliens will be initiating contact with us, stating their landing spot could likely be the White House lawn or something similar. Our sci-fi movies about alien interactions will turn into a reality. I don't believe it will take hundreds or even thousands of years. If I had to make a reasonable, logical prediction, I'd say it's going to happen in 60 to 75 years. Uri Geller's claims have sparked a lot of debate and skepticism, with many dismissing his predictions as mere speculation. However, Geller firmly stands by his beliefs and has even offered to assist in decoding any potential signals from extraterrestrials. Interestingly, Geller is not the first person to claim that an alien invasion is on the horizon. Many renowned scientists and researchers have also speculated about the possibility of alien life and the potential for contact with advanced civilizations. One of the most famous examples is the Drake Equation, created by American astronomer Frank Drake. The equation attempts to estimate the number of active, communicative extraterrestrial civilizations in our galaxy. While the exact answer remains unknown, it suggests that there could be a significant number of advanced civilizations out there. Recent advancements in technology have also increased our ability to search for and potentially communicate with extraterrestrial life. I'm looking at you, James Webb Telescope. What's out there? You're showing us photos of the galaxy from the distant ancient past. It's crazy. Another example is the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence Program, which uses radio telescopes to scan the skies for any potential signals from another planet. If the aliens are out there, call us. 
We just want to talk. I have at least three questions. And finally, rounding out our list today, we have the predictions of Nick Pope, a former UFO investigator for the UK's Ministry of Defense and now a British freelance journalist. He has made some intriguing comments about alien life. In an episode of Blaze TV's Indistinguishable from Magic, he made a striking statement. Quote, Should we come across aliens, or if they discover us, it would completely transform our world. He recalls attending a pair of meetings at the Royal Society in London, where the implications of extraterrestrial existence were the main topic. He posed an interesting question, quote, if we encounter alien life and it's more than just receiving signals or discovering alien microbes, will they be friendly, like the beloved ET, or more like the hostile aliens from Independence Day, seeking our destruction? He noted that opinions were divided at the Royal Society on this issue. Citing another professor's words, Pope concluded, with a stark warning. Quote, if we get a call from Cosmos, think twice before answering. He expressed his concern that it might already be too late, as our civilization has been detectable for decades via our television and radio signals reaching space. This implies that any alien civilization with the capacity to pose a threat to us is likely already aware of our existence. Nick Pope also discussed the ethical considerations surrounding potential contact with extraterrestrial life. He believes that any any advanced alien species should be respected and treated as equals rather than potentially exploited for their advanced technology. This raises questions about whether humanity is ready for such a significant encounter and whether we have the maturity to handle it responsibly. We don't. We don't. Spoiler alert, there's no f way that we deserve aliens, not a chance. Pope further elaborated on the potential impact of contact with aliens on religion and the implications it would have on our understanding of the universe. He asserted that while some religious beliefs may not be able to withstand such a revelation, it could also potentially bring about a new era of spiritual enlightenment as we grapple with our understanding of our place in the cosmos alongside other intelligent beings. He also discussed the potential for collaboration and cooperation between humans and extraterrestrial beings. He believes that such an encounter could lead to advancements in science and technology, as well as exchange ideas and knowledge with a more advanced civilization. However, he also acknowledged the possibility of negative consequences if we are not prepared for contact with aliens. He warned that it could potentially lead to panic and chaos among the general public, and called for governments and scientists to have contingency plans in place for such a scenario. His comments make you think about the potential impact that contact with alien life really could have on our world. It could bring about immense changes and advancements, but also poses ethical considerations and potential dangers. Whether or not we are truly prepared for such an event remains to be seen, but it is a topic that continues to intrigue and captivate us. Who knows what secrets and mysteries await us in the vast expanse of the universe. As we continue to search for answers and make progress in our understanding, it is clear that the potential discovery of extraterrestrial life would be a defining moment in human history. Let's hope that when the time comes, we are ready to face whatever lies beyond our planet with curiosity, respect, and open minds. Number 5. Human-Alien Hybridization It is believed that NASA has been conducting experiments to create human-alien hybrids by combining the DNA of humans and extraterrestrial beings. This experiment raises ethical concerns as it could potentially lead to a new species with unknown abilities and characteristics. It is also speculated that this hybridization program could have been a way for NASA to gain knowledge and technology from advanced alien civilizations. Although there is no concrete evidence to support these claims, some whistleblowers and conspiracy theorists allege that there have been successful human-alien hybrid births. They claim that these hybrids possess a mix of human and extraterrestrial qualities such as heightened intelligence, telepathy, and psychic abilities. The idea of human-alien hybrids has long been a subject in science fiction and conspiracy theories. However, the concept is not entirely far-fetched. Scientists have successfully created hybrid animals by mixing DNA from different species. This process is called interspecific hybridization and has been used to create new plant and animal species with desired traits. It's not surprising that NASA, with its advanced technology and resources, would explore the possibility of creating human-alien hybrids. The implications of this experiment are vast and could have far-reaching 
damaging consequences. If successful, it could change our understanding of what it means to be human and challenge societal norms. The existence of these hybrids could also raise questions about their rights and treatment in society. Apart from the ethical issues, there are also concerns about the potential dangers of creating human alien hybrids. The unknown abilities and characteristics of these hybrids could pose a threat to society or even themselves. It's a risk that many argue should not be taken lightly. On to number four, mind control. NASA has also been accused of experimenting with mind control techniques on alien subjects. These experiments involve using advanced technology to control the thoughts and actions of alien beings, and the implications of this type of experiment are disturbing and could potentially have serious consequences. Some whistleblowers have claimed that NASA has been working with extraterrestrial species to develop mind control technology. These claims suggest that NASA is using alien subjects as test subjects for the experiments. The true extent of these experiments is unknown, but it's clear that they are highly secretive and kept hidden from the public. One of the most well-known cases involving mind control experiments by NASA is the alleged collaboration with gray aliens. This species is often depicted in popular culture as having advanced technological abilities and a strong interest in human experimentation. The idea that NASA could be working hand in hand with these beings to develop mind control technology is unsettling to say the least. The potential implications of mind control experiments on alien subjects are vast. It not only raises concerns about the treatment of these beings, but also about the potential consequences if this technology were to fall in the wrong hands. The idea that NASA could be experimenting with controlling the thoughts and actions of extraterrestrial species without their consent is deeply concerning. On top of that, it begs the question, why would NASA even want to develop mind control technology? Some speculate that it could be used for military purposes, such as controlling enemy soldiers. Others believe it could be used on humans as a form of psychological warfare. Whatever the reasons may be, the facts remain that these experiments are being conducted in secrecy and without public knowledge or consent. The lack of transparency Transparency surrounding these experiments only adds to their unsettling nature. It's unclear what safeguards are in place to protect the well-being and rights of the alien subjects involved. Without proper oversight and ethical considerations, these experiments could have dangerous consequences for both the aliens and potentially even humanity. NASA's alleged mind control experiments on alien subjects raise serious ethical concerns and highlight the need for transparency in scientific research. The treatment of non-human beings and the potential consequences of developing such advanced technology should not be taken lightly. It's important for us to question and hold accountable those in position of power and ensure that ethical boundaries are respected, especially when it comes to experimentation on other species. Number three, cloning. Cloning is another unsettling experiment that NASA has been rumored to conduct on alien organisms. This involves creating identical copies of living organisms or replicating their DNA for scientific research purposes. However, the idea of cloning aliens and beings raises questions about the morality and ethics of such experiments. It also sparks concerns about the potential consequences of introducing genetically modified alien species into our environment. The concept of cloning is not new and it has been used extensively in scientific research for decades. However, the idea of cloning an extraterrestrial being is still highly controversial. And there are no concrete reports or evidence to suggest that NASA has actually attempted such experiments. Nonetheless, the possibility of cloning alien organisms raises ethical concerns and prompts us to question the boundaries of scientific research. On top of that, the idea of creating clones of intelligent alien beings also brings up potential issues of exploitation and control. If NASA were to successfully clone an extraterrestrial species, questions would arise about their rights and whether they should be treated as equals or used for our own benefit. The fear of creating a species of clones that could potentially overpower humans and threaten our existence is also a valid concern. On top of that, the introduction of genetically modified alien organisms into our environment could have unknown consequences on our ecosystem. It's not surprising that NASA has been secretive about any potential cloning experiments on aliens. The field of cloning is already controversial enough when it comes to human beings, but adding extraterrestrial beings into the mix only intensifies the ethical dilemmas. Overall, while cloning is a fascinating concept in scientific research, it also highlights the need for careful consideration and ethical guidelines when it comes to experimenting on alien organisms. The potential implications and consequences of such experiments cannot be ignored, and it is important for NASA and any other 
organization to prioritize the well-being and rights of any alien life forms that may be in their possession. So it's crucial for NASA to have a thorough understanding of the potential risks and impacts before conducting any experiments involving cloning of alien organisms. On top of that, open communication and transparency about such experiments can help alleviate fears and concerns within the public. The exploration of ET life is an exciting field, but it should never come at the expense of ethical boundaries and potential harm to alien beings. As we continue to search for answers about life beyond Earth, it's important to approach any experiments with caution and responsibility. Only then can we truly understand and appreciate the mysteries of the universe. So let's hope that NASA and other organizations will prioritize responsible and ethical practices in their pursuit of understanding and studying alien life forms. As the famous quote goes, with great power comes great responsibility. And as we continue to make advancements in technology and science, it's our responsibility to use it for the betterment of all beings, whether they are from Earth or beyond. Number two, genetic manipulation. Similar to cloning, NASA has also been accused of conducting experiments involving genetic manipulation on alien species. This involves altering the genetic makeup of living organisms in order to study their responses and behaviors. The potential consequences of this type of experiment are unknown and could have serious repercussions. So some believe that these experiments were conducted on extraterrestrial beings that NASA has encountered during their space missions. There are a few possible reasons why NASA NASA would conduct such experiments. One reason could be to gain a deeper understanding of the genetic makeup and evolution of alien species. By manipulating their genes, scientists may have been able to unlock secrets about their biology and how they have adapted to different environments. Another reason could be for military purposes. Some theorists believe that NASA has been collaborating with the government and conducting these experiments in order to create super soldiers or advanced weapons using alien DNA. The consequences of genetic manipulation on ET beings are unknown, but they could potentially have a damaging impact on both the aliens and our own planet. Altering the genetic makeup of a species could lead to unintended mutations and disruptions in their natural order. This could also have ripple effects on our planet if these modified aliens were to be released back into the wild. On top of that, there are ethical concerns surrounding conducting experiments on sentient beings without their consent. If these aliens are intelligent and self-aware, then it is a violation of their rights to be subjected to genetic manipulation without their understanding or consent. As with the other unsettling experiments conducted by NASA, there are claims that these genetic manipulation experiments have been covered up and kept hidden from the public. This could be due to the potential backlash and outrage from both the scientific community and the general public if this, if this information were to come to light. If the government is involved in these experiments for military purposes, it's possible that they are keeping them secret to maintain their advantage over other nations. And finally, number one, time travel. Another unsettling experiment that NASA NASA has allegedly been conducting is time travel. This involves sending living organisms, including alien beings, through space and time to study their reactions and changes in behavior. The implications of this type of experiment are vast and could have far-reaching consequences on the fabric of the universe. Some believe that these experiments could even lead to parallel universes or alternate timelines, creating a ripple effect on our own reality. These experiments are said to have been kept hidden from the public due to their controversial nature and potential ethical concerns, however, leaked documents and testimonies from former NASA employees suggest that these experiments have been going on for decades. The concept of time travel has long been a fascination for humans with many theories and ideas surrounding it. Some believe that time travel is possible through advanced technology or even naturally occurring phenomena. NASA's alleged involvement in such experiments only adds fuel to the fire of these speculations. The question remains, why would NASA conduct such experiments? Some argue that it is for pure scientific curiosity, while others believe there may be a more sinister motive at play. Regardless, the thought of tampering with time and space is unsettling and raises many ethical questions. Number five, who wants to go to Wonderland? I'm officially kicking off this list with the most recent sighting on today's list. And for this gal, the one that's uh, closest to home. If you know, you know. So sometime over this past weekend, multiple people recorded footage of a glowing orange light hovering in the sky over or none other than Canada's Wonderland. So me, being the skeptic that I am, doubted the influx of videos that I was being sent until I finally had time this morning to sit down and watch them, and I genuinely have no idea what it could be other than a UFO. Like originally I wanted to write it off as one of the many millions of holiday lights they have glowing in the park right now for their Winterfest event. And trust me, they have a lot. But the glowing figure goes from being vertical in footage from one area to completely horizontal in another, and I'm talking like opposite ends of the park, and alternates between staying solitary 
scary and moving around. It personally looks nothing like any of the drones I've ever seen in this lifetime, both professional drones and personal drones. And while I'm not an expert, feel free to let me know in the comments if you think otherwise. Maybe the aliens just wanted to visit Winterfest? It's quite the cute event if you like Christmas. I don't know. Number 4. UFO Over the Vatican Alrighty folks, time to travel back a simple 13 years in history to visit the Vatican and I promise this time I'm not trying to borrow the chronovisor. I promise. So was Rome visited by unidentified flying objects? Definitely. And the sightings in the skies over Vatican City stirred newspaper headlines and numerous TV news reports in Italy. So according to reports it seemed that a UFO flap was taking place in Rome and that strange objects were also recorded on camera several times. The most important one is the footage of an odd luminous formation taken by three security guards stationed in front of the residence of the US ambassador to the Vatican. Now these were qualified witnesses since they are artillery men, trained experts, you know, in air surveillance. This was around 4 a.m. on the night of June 7th, when these three men, belonging to the 17 degree anti-aircraft regiment at the Santa Barbara station, spotted three spherical bright objects hovering the sky above St. Peter's Dome, you know, right in the Vatican, right in the center of Rome. So they promptly filmed the unexpected nocturnal air show with, you know, a cell phone, because that's always what you got on hand. You got a little Flip. So from their point of observation in the Roman Monteverde area, they immediately stopped a police patrol because you know they're well trained in spotting aircrafts, and they excluded the possibility of a commercial plane, a jet fighter, or a balloon. They described the object's swift maneuvers, mentioning you know darting move towards the sky, a delta formation, and luminous dots suspended at about 300 feet above the ground. They added that there is no way a conventional airplane can do such things. The UFO disappeared and reappeared for brief moments, with sudden changes of altitude before it darted westbound at a 40 degree angle. Now, the police patrol took the report very seriously, and the central police station in Rome was immediately alerted. The footage, more than a minute in length, was acquired by the Italian police, pending further investigations. Now, thanks to the technical background of the witnesses, many TV networks took the news very seriously. Studio Aperto anchorwoman Elena Guarnieri introduced the segment by saying, "You know, like we're going to show you now an exclusive video footage of a UFO sighting in Rome, and this video was filmed by three soldiers. So, like, take a look." Staff journalist Paolo Capresi then described the images, saying, "They are three flying objects, and they are floating in the air." They were filmed last night above Rome. These images were taken with a cell phone by three soldiers who were in service in front of the U.S. ambassador's residence in the Vatican City, Monteverde district, two steps from St. Peter's Square, and were immediately handed over to the police. Now, why did I say this all word for word? Even though I'm repeating myself, I like to make sure I'm using direct quotes, folks. We like to be credible around here. As you can see, there are no objects around to use as reference points that could give them the exact distance or size of the UFOs, and it seemed that they were spherical in shape and how they hovered above the Vatican. They appear to disappear often without changing altitude. The journalists concluded, you know, almost ironically, the soldiers who have filmed these three objects are based in the anti-aircraft division and are specialized in recognizing the flight path of the aircraft. Since 1978, you know, it's the Air Force that is in charge of registering sightings. Now, this sighting was actually preceded approximately eight hours before by another relevant sighting. When well, the day before, at 8 p.m., many motors traveling along the Via Aurelia and the A12 highway in the section between Civita Vecchia and Santa Marinella said they saw a very bright circular object flying across the sky. Paranormal and other explain paranormal and other unexplained activities activity has been reported in and above Vatican City for years. But the increased reports of UFO phenomena immediately following the death of Pope John Paul II had many people in the field of extraterrestrial research wondering if there was some sort of connection. As well, there had been several documented accounts of increased anomalous activity in different locations throughout Vatican City. Yeah, once again, right after that death. My theory? The aliens were in town to pay their respects to the former Pope. We all know they've got a UFO in their archives somewhere. Number 3. Maryborough So this UFO phenomenon remains unsolved after a government authorities and weather experts failed to explain strange orange lights sighted by hundreds of residents back in 2011. So at the time, local news outlet The Chronicle was bombarded with phone calls, emails, visitors, you name it, after publishing a story about the hovering objects, which had appeared in the night sky over the city the week before. Now, while all residents had similar descriptions of the glowing balls of light and their slow movements back and forth across the sky, the story did take quite an eerie twist. Nobody was able to successfully capture the unidentified objects with a camera. Now, we do have some of the commentary from the time to share with y'all. Let's start with, my partner, my brother and I all saw the lights. I tried to film them on my phone, but when I later looked at the footage, nothing showed up. Very strange. This came from Phil and Karina in an email. I took a very magnified photo of the last orange orb, but it does not seem to have come out on my camera. 
according to somebody named Martine. It was very weird. The lights did not seem to be flying too high above us. I grabbed my binoculars to try and get a better look. It was weird. Well, I could see a string of lights without the binoculars. When I looked through them, I could only see one light, according to Azoic. And then Greg said, We saw four lights in a group. I tried to take photos with my camera, but they didn't come up. That's a lot of witnesses, folks. UFO Research Queensland Sightings Officer Martin Gottschall, who had studied UFOs for more than 30 years, said that he had received the reports about the orange balls of lights. Now, as for the objects not showing up in photographs, he said it seemed as though extraterrestrial crafts could make light do things that we haven't learned yet. People have theorized that maybe the force field around the UFO somehow affects the way in which ordinary light, like infrared, shows up. So, for example, when people take photos of what they think is a UFO and there's an aircraft nearby, the aircraft will come out as defined while the UFO is hazy. Now, Gay Kaya Biab, the uh, local neighborhood centered multicultural worker, dismissed suggestions that the lights were Chinese New Year's lanterns. Apparently, the Chinese population in that region wasn't very significant, and since it wasn't the Chinese New Year at the time, it was close, but it was already over, it just wasn't it. Lanterns are released as signs of good luck, but he wasn't aware of any celebrations, and it was very unlikely that they would be released for several days in a row. A Fraser Coast Regional Council spokesman said it was unlikely the lights were caused by aircrafts, but from the, you know, from the nearby airport. A spokesman from the Bureau of Meteorology said he couldn't think of anything weather-wise that would cause something like that, and directed the Chronicle to two different Queensland UFO organizations. Now, the Australian Army was contacted, but didn't respond to a suggestion that the bright lights could have come from its, you know, training area. So let me know in the comments what you think. Number two, Colombia. So back in January of 2011, the highest volcano in Colombia was the scene of numerous UFO sightings, which according to some is due to extraterrestrials monitoring seismic activity in an effort to save the human race. Locals in the border region between the two departments of Huila and Coca, where the volcan Nevado del Huila is situated, believe the UFOs to belong to extraterrestrial beings, and have documented sightings with pictures and videos. Now these claims were backed by local UFO expert Ricardo Ayerbe, who told the newspaper that he had witnessed an increase in unidentified flying objects over the last decade. Now, he explains that he was investigating the phenomenon and believed that alien beings have an interest in the geological area, which at the time presented at a level 3 risk level means, you know, which means that uh, there were some changes in volcanic activity. The activity of a number of volcanoes in the central Andes had not only caused alarm, but also provided a possible explanation for the sightings, according to this expert. We've got a direct quote. Quite possibly these sightings are related to these geological events that have occurred in recent months. At the moment, there have been sightings in areas of geological risk because it seems they have an interesting, you know, because it seems they have an interest in observing the risks that humanity is taking. Surely with the purpose of intervening to try and save the race from these risks, he explained, apparently with a straight face. Yikes. Number one, Kansas City. This alleged craft was recorded last October in Raytown, Missouri. The person who submitted it said, unknown aerial object caught on camera, slow moving, and sometimes translucent and sometimes rejecting light. Commenter stated, one of the coolest UFO vids yet. Someone's stealth tech is not working 100%. Now others state, incredible find. This is compelling. It's seriously mind blowing and I cannot stop watching it. Now commenters suspect the object to be at least seven or eight feet across. As for anyone who thinks the footage has been faked or edited because the UFO looked blurry, one person gave a possible explanation saying, you know, it's rotating and that's why it looks translucent and changing shape. It's also moving very fast if you check the change in size. But the reason that's taking me away from it is the no change in the picture quality of the craft. It should get blurry due to the distances or changes in lighter contrast. It all remains the same even when the craft is moving away very fast. Try imagining a vehicle moving fast on the street. Now others wonder why there is a person or some kind of being running in the video and what they witnessed. The suburbs of Kansas City, Missouri have been very active with UFO, you know, UAP sightings and reports for the last decade. So maybe it's time to take a field trip? <laughs>